live in an age where more of us in the middle class have homes of our own than ever before. And as home ownership has grown, so has the home design market. But here's my problem. As wonderful as many of the new home products are, I still miss the personalized nature of the furniture that the craftsmen and the carpenters would make for previous generations. I ended up at apartment 9 in Delhi's Greater Kailash Market. You know, one of the things that's happened in India over the last few years is that we now have shops doing world-class furniture. But somehow I wondered, in our quest for world-class, have we lost the traditional skills of our craftsmen? Is it possible to do world-class bespoke furniture? I'm here to find out. The owner, Anuja, clearly has good taste, judging by some of the merchandise on display. But I wonder if I could get her to use that make something special for me. Your speciality is what? Given that you're exports and all of that? Now to apartment 9 essentially there are two sides of the business as uh, we said. One is of course the retail side which are the stores per se. The other wing is the interior design wing that is also a big part of the business. So you're not just furniture makers or, We're just not, or fabric makers? No, we do the whole interior concept now. You're the right people to come to then. Because what I'm looking for is the chair that's a one-off. There should be mm -hmm. no chair anywhere in the world that's like it. It should take the principles of say a Chesterfield design, mm -hmm. work on them, it should have a footstool and it should have a fabric that you've designed that's different. That's possible? Do right. it yeah, it's possible to do that. We're going to start with finding the right proportion of the chair for you. Okay. And then we're going to apply uh, one of our fabrics on it which are designed in-house. Okay. So you cannot get those fabrics So let's, let's choose the fabric. So we have a whole range of uh, fabrics and applications that we can use and do. Uh, there's of course the fabric version of it and the leather versions of it. Okay. To keep it crisp for you, yeah. I would suggest that we use the leather version on it. Which okay. is something like this. Which okay. is a leather which is further uh, you know, there's a technique applied to it of quilting, okay. so where we, wherein we take a pattern and then the whole fabric of the leather is quilted with it. Okay. So it, it gives a very three-dimensional sort of a feel. Oh, there's paisley. Which there's is a paisley, yeah. Pretty much the motive for the show, so that's nice. Okay. But can we sort of jazz it up slightly? Can we like do a footstool in a different fabric? Yeah, we can do that. So uh, to complement the ivory that this is. So let's do something richer and chocolatey. Is that possible? Yes, absolutely. So, you, so you'll do a fabric for me that's chocolatey? We'll, we'll do a fabric oh, for you. Do you have one or you'll do one? We'll do one for you. So we go with this kind of chair mm -hmm. and a sort of chocolatey footstool mm -hmm. and is there any way in which we can integrate the two fabrics? We can. Uh, what we can do is we can add some elements of chocolate on the accru chair. Okay. So we can do it a little bit of a piping sort of a detail around nice. the so chair. It'll, so it looks like part of the same family. Yeah, and the footstool will have the reverse where it's chocolate and then it'll have the ivory piping all and around. And how long will this take? Ideally a piece of furniture from start to finish takes about three to four weeks. So that's what we're looking at. That's not so bad. Yeah. yeah. So I need to come back when? Let's say four weeks from now. Four weeks from now I come back and you'll have a chair with a footstool. Yeah. Ready for you to be comfortable in. As you can see, I didn't even have to ask for the paisley. It was already part of the pattern she had in mind. Call it synchronicity or serendipity. But it seemed to me that the great paisley adventure had taken on a life of its own. And sure enough, after four weeks, when Anuja's craftsmen had done their stuff, I turned up again at the shop to check out my chair. It was pretty much as I'd imagined. It looked sophisticated and luxurious. Okay, so this is it? This is it. This Amazing. is what we custom made for you. You made it actually from scratch? Absolutely that from design scratch. just for me? Just for you. It's amazing. And there, within the swirls of ivory leather, was my beloved Paisley Motor. Wow, well, two things. First of all, it is broad. Mm -hmm. yeah, I could fit somebody else in it, but then I like that. I mean, space is the ultimate luxury. It's actually rare to find something that looks this good and feels so good. You know, comfort in furniture is everything now, I feel. Thanks, Roger. It really is nice. I'm glad you it, like it. Yeah, it really is comfortable. 
Okay, so what do I really think? Well, here's what I think. I think that this would cost 80 to 90,000. It's been done to my specifications. I've chosen the fabric, the leather, the color. I've chosen the height. It's been done exactly the way I wanted to. Contrast this with the old days. If you wanted furniture of this quality once upon a time, you had to go abroad. If you went to London, this would cost at least twice as much because the quality of the leather. You would have no choice in the matter. You'd go to a shop. You'd have to buy whatever they made for you. In India, on the other hand, you can choose everything. You can choose the leather. You can choose the shape. You can choose the height. If you don't like it, they'll change it. If something tears, they'll fix it for you. That's the miracle of Indian design. It's right there at your doorstep. It's half the price. So you're crazy to go and buy things abroad when you can have them made for you custom made in India. The one thing that Indians have always had custom made is jewelry. Ganjam jewelers in Bangalore have been in the business since the 19th century. They've made fabulous pieces for princesses and other very, very rich people through the ages. Mr. Ishwar Ganjam, one of the owners of Ganjam, brought along some samples of Ganjam's work along with some of the gems that went into the jewelry. So it's really been a family business for generations, no? Yes. Generations of dealing in stones, going to people and saying, will you get these wonderful stones? I don't think there are that many people who buy 100 carats worth of diamonds these days, are there? Oh, yes. There no, are. Yeah, wait, okay, well, you come to the wrong place, because I'm certainly not going to. But can we have a look at some of the stones? Actually, yeah. Uh, this, what I'm showing you is... Uh, yeah with flat diamonds and rubies and emeralds, oh, great. which is mostly used for the heritage jewelry. Okay. Heritage jewelry. This is called as a cob ruby, uncut ruby jar. Wow. They are from Burma. Can I like hold one? I mean... They are cut ones, okay. but it's like a cob shape. There, there is no facets there. Facets okay. are there. But it is mostly used for a heritage jewelry. This may cost you around about, say, uh, each piece around about uh, 8,000 rupees. 8,000 rupees for each stone? Yes, sir. Okay, I think you should put them away before I feel faint. Yeah, okay, let's look at, let's look at some more. These are, these are the emeralds. I probably faint when you tell me how much they cost, but you know, I have no interest in jewelry, but even I am completely gobsmacked. These are from where, sir? These are Zambian. These are Zambian emeralds? Zambian emeralds. This will be probably about, say, 30,000 rupees. These are flat diamonds, cut on one side, mostly used for, again, all heritage. Wow. Use. When you say flat diamond means what? Kind of cut? We get the rough diamonds like that, in the flattish way, they cut it like that. And these it's diamonds from, are from? They are from African diamonds. These are African diamonds? Okay. Yeah. So how much do these cost? About 5 lakhs of piece. This little thing is 5 lakhs? 5 lakhs of piece. So there's many crores in that little plaque of piece. Okay, now I do feel faint. Can I see some of the jewelry? Yes, certainly. These are bangers. goodbyes, he showed me a pin that wasn't very expensive, but it was quite lovely nevertheless. It was a variation on the Paisley motive. And so, the great Paisley adventure went on and on. Finally, it was time to conclude the great Paisley adventure. I'd not been rich enough to afford any of Ganjam's fabulous custom-made pieces, but I did have the lamp, which looked great. I had the chair, which was not only broad enough for fat old me, but could easily accommodate another fatty. And then I had to see what Peter had come up with. 
Okay, so here's the moment when it all comes together. Rather than just showing you the things we commissioned in the course of this episode, I thought we'd do it in style. I'm here at Indian Accent, my favorite restaurant. We have dinner cooked by a real superstar, Manish Mehrotra. And we have the things we commissioned. We have the light installation. We have that wonderful, comfortable chair. And we have these amazing table linen mats and napkins. And even better, we have the guy who made it with us. <laughs> Hi, Pete. <laughs> How are you? Thank you. It's wonderful to be here. Shall we sort of talk about the linen first or should we eat? Uh, we can talk about that. Okay, so let's start with this. This is truly and totally amazing. Tell me how you made it. As you can see, this is printed. Okay. Uh, in fact, this pattern we call the shawl stripe, and these booties the, the here. The what stripe? Shawl, shawl stripe. Like a shawl. Like a shawl. Okay. Yes. And um, of course, they're woven uh, originally. Okay. And as you can see, this color blocking here with the black and the green, uh, that would have been the warp ends uh, of the fabric. If it uh, was actually woven. If it was actually woven, but we've and we've used that inspiration. Um, in this design so, so we how do you actually do it you take a photograph and then do it or no how do you get this print uh paint on paper oh it's painted painted in okay. our studio okay we scan the artwork and then we work with textures and colors as you can see we so what are you saying you're saying that all of this was painted by hand at some stage painted by hand and then you'll actually see we've we've included a twill weave effect as if it yeah. was woven um, and that's that's done on the computer. So we mix age-old uh, processes, hand painting, um, and then we scan it and use the computer as well. Um, so it's modern technology taking the original weave yes. with the intervention of somebody actually painting my hand. Exactly. And as Manish Mehrotra sent out some amazing dishes, Peter warmed to his subject and explained what he'd done. It is amazing. Wonderful. There's no better way to end an adventure than with a fabulous meal. The great Paisley adventure that had begun in his studio many weeks ago was drawing to a satisfying conclusion. I had celebrated the motif that India gave the world, the motif that adorned so many Jamevar shawls, Kashmiri carpets, Indian prints, and pieces of traditional jewelry. And you can get them for much less than they would cost in New York, Paris, London, or anywhere else. Well, thank you, Peter. It's been an amazing meal, an amazing conversation, and of course, amazing stuff. But the lesson in all of this is that it doesn't make much sense buying branded Western stuff, which is huge duties and storage costs and transport costs. When here in India, you can get the finest craftsmen in the world to make this for you wonderful one-off pieces, which are custom-made. Yes, exactly. Thank you. Thank you very much.